what the heck do a buffalo, a rock, and a bag of Fritos have in common? Well, I'm not going to tell you. I mean, you're just going to have to watch the third and fourth episodes of the Amazon original series, Outer Range. So this is going to have some spoilers from the first two episodes, but I'll stay away from spoilers for our episodes three and four. Now, in the first two episodes, we meet Royal, played by Josh Brolin, who's a Wyoming rancher that discovers this giant hole in his west pasture. Now, it's not your regular sinkhole, but an anomaly that messes with time. Now, he sticks his hand in it at one point and gets a small glimpse of the future. Now, Royal's in a land dispute with the Tillerson Ranch, who's right next door. And when a fight between Royal's son and a Tillerson son breaks out, resulting in the Tillerson man dying, Royal then decides to dispose of the body in the most likeliest of places, the giant hole in the pasture. Now, Imogen Poots plays a wandering poet named Autumn, who asks to camp on the land for a little bit. But her behaviors, they really raise a bunch of questions as to what her real motives are. One night after following Royal into the pasture, she pushes him into the hole, where then he wakes up to a crowd of people around him, some dressed all in yellow, and his wife then telling him that he'd been dead for two years. So he's obviously very confused at what's happening, and when one of the Tillersons, who was their soul there, starts shooting at him, Royal jumps back into the hole and then wakes up in his current timeline. So many questions are raised by what we see in episodes one and two. I mean, there's tons of foreshadowing also. Amy makes this drawing that shows the family all dressed in yellow with these black clad figures looming behind them. And then there's the story that Cecilia tells Amy about how she met Royal, how he wandered onto the family ranch without any family, mirroring in a small way the way that Autumn appears at the ranch. So in these current two episodes, we get more with a few of the characters that were only in the periphery for the premiere episodes. Lily Taylor and Tamara Podemski get more interaction and they get more screen time too, as does Will Patton. <laughs> Will Patton is so strange, but he's awesome. I mean, there's a point where he's kind of channeling Nicolas Cage with his mannerisms and his speaking cadence. Now we can see how this land dispute is very important to him, and we begin to get an understanding of why, but there's also still a lot of vagueness that shrouds his actions and motivations, which I'm just absolutely loving because it continues to amp up the mystery. When we finally get more with Lily Taylor, her dynamic with Brolin feels very authentic. I mean, there's love there, but also frustration. It's that complex relationship that only comes from years and years of being together. And I love their rapport, but I also love how she's working through her own set of issues. I mean, she looks to be processing a lot. And based on some of the things she sees, there are some great questions that are arising about her and her family. Now with Deputy Joy, who's also running for sheriff, she gets a bunch more screen time in these episodes. And I just love some of her interactions. She's not rash or impulsive. And I love how much of a patient thinker she is. She's also working through so many different angles and possibilities in her head, and she doesn't seem to have a loyalty to anyone where it would make her turn away from the law. And that's despite having sort of a friendship with both the Abbots and the Tillersons. And I think her investigation is very engaging. The way she questions characters lets us know her suspicions, even though she doesn't voice them all. And within her investigation and the interviews, there is a suspense that is absolutely growing. She'll uncover something, confront it, then be met with some sort of opposition, only to then re-examine, which then brings her back around to confronting again. I mean, the scenarios play out in ways that are very engaging and then even stressful. Now, something I noticed in the first two episodes and that continues in these current ones is that the musical score reminds me a bit of John Carpenter's The Thing or even Escape from New York, where there's slowly pulsing bass notes. I mean, it's not quite a horror vibe, but certainly something that's dark and mysterious. And I love how the theme is carried from episode to episode, enhancing the eerie and the odd tone of the show. The cinematography continues to be amazing in this. I mean, there are some scenes within these episodes where some visuals become sort of wonky. And I'm not talking about wonky isn't bad, but what the characters experience is very weird. And I love that when I saw it, the first question out of my mouth was, does everybody see that or just this character? And then I'm followed by a chuckle with, what the heck is going on? I mean, I love it. The mystery piles on slowly, but with each small addition, a new level of tension is also added. There's an interaction between Royal and Autumn that is incredibly uneasy. Because they know about the hole and the fact that Autumn pushed Royal in, there's this massive amount of friction between the two. And once Royal discovers something on the mountain, it makes him very curious about something that Autumn has. As their dialogue is playing out, the stakes of their words just keep raising. I mean, I thought for sure what the outcome was going to be and how it would influence future events. But I'm happy to say, though, it wasn't entirely correct. Their conversation is very cryptic. And the dialogue is also very deliberate. So right now, I can't tell if some of it is foreshadowing or just simply painting a picture for us with vivid descriptions. I mean, either way, though, I was riveted by the scene. 
I love when a show doesn't hold itself to a specific runtime. Now, while episode three is about 45 minutes long, episode four is right at an hour. It's so good to have episodes that take the time they need to tell that portion of the story rather than either being constrained to a time limit or feeling like things need to be dragged out in order to fill a time limit. The pace continues to be deliberate and building with this urgency that is present, but not totally defined. I mean, we feel sort of a clock ticking where events are going to come to a head, but there's also the patience of the Western that plays out as the narrative doesn't rush the progress. We stew in the mystery and the story for a while, but I never get the sense that we're meandering through something that doesn't have a point or a direction. Now, I mentioned Fritos in the intro, and there is a scene that involves Royal and a guy who just enjoys Fritos. <laughs> this is a very funny scene, but it also provides a ton of insight into things that are coming. So overall, this series continues to blow me away with the storytelling. I mean, we get a little bits of information here and there, but the mystery continues to build. The characters are wildly engaging, and their complexities grab hold of my attention and demand that I not look away. The pace is just what you'd expect from a modern Western. It's deliberate and purposeful while still maintaining a patience that builds suspense. The acting is phenomenal with the characters playing off each other to create interactions that are enigmatic but layered with meaning. And the soundtrack is also something that enhances the mood of the show, creating some lighthearted moments when they're called for, but also bringing out the darker tone of the underlying story. Because we're now halfway through the season, I do hope that the show can continue to play out the mysterious angles and then provide some satisfying answers. Now, I don't want all of them just yet, but I do want to have the confidence that the writers know exactly where they're taking us and we're going to bring us to a satisfying conclusion. There's no sex, some brief nudity, a lot of profanity, and some violence. I give episodes three and four of Outer Range four and a half out of five couches. Okay, so who's your favorite character in this so far? I mean, it's hard for me to choose one, but as much as I really like both Royal and Wayne, I think Autumn is the one that I'm most intrigued by because she's just so mysterious. Let me know who your favorite is in the comments below. If you enjoyed this review, please give it a like. Also, don't forget to share and subscribe. I'm Chris. This is Movies and Munchies. Thanks for couching with me.